Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage and this one features Honda Africa Twins in several variants. Behind me you'll see my original RDO3 Africa Twin that came out in 1988 and was basically developed purely for Dakar. Uh, it was a customer version of the Dakar bike that Honda went on to win four times in a row. And then it was produced a huge commercial success, the um, Africa Twin legend, as it were, for Honda. Um, eventually went out of production in the noughties. Everybody said, why can't they introduce a new Africa Twin? So in 2015 they did, and that's the bike you see behind me. Grew up to 1,000cc. Um, this is a brand new bike behind me, 2017. Also with DCT gearbox, which I'm intrigued by. And I'm going to give these a proper test because... In a few hours' time, a van's rocking up and it's going to transport them down to Coulour, which is a little French town um, just on the French-Spanish border right by the Mediterranean, because we're off to the hills again. I did it before with um, sort of in proper enduro bikes. I want to see if I can take these, these bigger, more comfortable bikes, uh, see how they get on, sort of on an adventure on some of the tracks we were doing. Anyway, I'm going to give you a closer look just before they leave, because uh, these are two really cool bikes. Right, let's have a look at the new Africa Twin first. Uh, quite a machine, this, uh, full of tech, traction controls, ABS, obviously, and all that sort of thing. But not only that, a DCT gearbox, so you can tell on uh, DC1 by, by that engine case in there. That is remarkable, six speed. Uh, it's a real purpose-made uh, bike to, to do dirt, and Honda are doing very well with it. I've actually done the Honda Africa Twin course in Wales, so I've sort of got to know this bike quite well. Uh, and I can't wait to really ride it on some proper tracks out in Spain. It's um, 242 kilos, as you see it there, which seems quite a lot. And now here, a completely different bike. Uh, this is my RD03. This is my slightly scruffy sort of farm bike one. I have had this for a couple of years. Um, it's, it seems to be uber reliable and um, it can take the knocks, etc. It's got the crash bars on it and things. Now this... This was what established uh, Honda in this adventure market. Very reliable, water-cooled V-twin on it. Um, great, I think I paid £1,500 for this or something. It might have been 17 It's either 15 or 1700 You can see, yeah, there's a few little things sort of holding the indicator on, things like that. But it's got the proper tyres on. And having ridden the new Africa Twin just on the farm last night, yes, it's, it's got a significant advantage over those tyres, which I've discovered are absolutely useless on grass. Yes, it didn't, it didn't fare too well in the fields, but I'm hoping on the gravel tracks, it'll be a lot better. Okay, well, that's the bikes. Next thing, a little bit more packing, and then the van's turning up in a couple of hours. I use a company called Chaz Mortimer. Um, it's £375 to take them down there, £375 to bring them back. Might sound a lot, but I put it down, it's like paying for the ultimate track day. Uh, I'll pay that so I can just fly into Perpignan on, on a cheap flight and travel light and head straight up in the hills of out the big slog all the way across France and all the way back. I want to remember the journey. So the next time you see me, we'll be in Couleur, about to set off and up into the hills. See you then. This is the first bit. It's always a bit weird when you're sort of in town, first time on the bikes. Um, Nigel in front of me has just bought that. He's, he's travelled about two miles on it so far, so um, all a bit strange. I've got this DCT Honda, um, which I've got to get used to. Keep trying to grab a clutch, but it's not there. Charlie, my son, has done a bit of off-roading around the farm and things, but not really this sort of stuff. They do look good, though. My goodness. Right, and now they're closing the road. Route barrier. Uh, what are we going to be doing here? Uh, let's see if we can just cut through this, we've got to cut through this, there we are, yeah, no, really looking forward to this, you can see, this sort of see where we're heading up there, um, should be good, perfect weather for it, it's what I do love coming down here because there's no mud or anything, it's all just dust and rocks, it makes such a difference, and you can sort of ride in um, a lighter gear so you're um, not, ov not overheating. I think we're going up that track there, yep. There we go, the start of the adventure. This, this tour in front screen still, it's just starting to annoy me, we've only set off. But it's just in between, be alright when I'm on the pegs. But uh, yeah, it just sort of catches your eye all the time. Uh, there we go, right, this bike, very odd because it's DCT. 
this sort of automatic gear change you just sort of got to trust it really I've got it in sports setting one well he seems to be doing a reasonable job it's 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 just peculiar when you first get on it but it's just quite nice at the moment not to have anything to worry about but I do wonder once it gets into a bit more testing on the gravel I think I'd quite like the clutch but let's see it might be 242 kilos but you don't really notice it on roads like this it has you know it must have a really low center of gravity or something temptation is to go a bit nuts but we're right at the early start of the trip and you've got to remember these are two-way tracks so yeah not always a good idea and this oh, this traction control is a bit annoying but you can alter it so I've got it on full traction control at the moment let's just put it down to one and see there we go yeah this is basically what the tracks are like they're meant to be passable with a 4x4 all the way around so the nice thing is that there's a bit of width but you just got to look out for the rocks really um, I sort of wish this Africa Twin had a bigger bash plate um, the older ones have got a full bash plate you can barely see the engine anywhere but I suppose this one just needs a bit more exposure for cooling or something I don't know but uh, yeah that's a slight worry it's funny you do all this and then you find a perfectly normal car it is remarkable for the size of bike this is you really don't notice it on a trip like this at the moment it's when it gets steep well, it's a bit more challenging but on here no problem at all okay it's great to see those snowy mountains in the distance makes it start to feel like a proper adventure yeah I've just lost the front on this thing oh, no, oh dear let's have a quick look yeah we're all right um, yeah it's terrible on sand these tires these standard fitment tires are not liking this at all what do you think here oh, well, we'll try this one as you can see there's not a lot of road signs out here I've just rescued Nigel off the slope there was a a bit of a black run appeared from nowhere um, which uh, I don't remember last time cows just thinking what are we doing oh look uh, a bit of water here's the fun thing with this sort of journey you have no idea what's around the corner let's have a look at this I better concentrate there's a few rocks give it a bit of a bit of a bit of gun and off we go Anything here? No, just have a bit of fun. You can hear the traction control working. Oh, I love tracks like that. Oh, now the others. Wow, look at that vista. Proper. God, there's a bit, a bit more gradient now. Now the others. Let's have a little look. I'll turn around. Yeah, that was the black run just there. You can see it. Um, oh, they're all hesitated. Where is the water jump that's put them off? I don't know. Oh dear. What's going on down there? Oh no. A push it went. Oh no, we've got another one that's stopped, have we? I presume that's Charlie stopped. What's happening? Oh, what a place. Let's just have a listen. You put you put the clutch in. Is that? Ah, I'm gonna have to tow him. And bikes never stop in the most friendly of places. Why is it so hard? Oh, not now. First time I've towed a bike out. Yeah, I don't want to make a habit of it. Just amazing, this DCT. Right, I think we'll bump start it down there. Ah, here we go. Ah, what a game. Oh, the main road, that's always nice. It is bizarre, these tracks. 
really bizarre. There's some ace roads around here, and they just come from nowhere. One minute you're on one of the tracks, and then you're on a scratching road like this. Good fun, though. As you say, it is a bit of China, and it is where the snow is. Well, we'll see how we get on. Yeah, this is it. Well, we'll have a go. We just stumbled across this end of the uh, day last time we were out here. Couldn't believe this track. Because uh, it just opens up. It's like it opens up bigger than, much bigger than this. Oh, oh, that's not good. That isn't, that isn't good. Are you all right? Well done, Charlie. See how you get on. You do get these up here for understandable reasons. Gotta oh, keep pressing on. There we go. Whoa. Hope and pray don't get a blessed puncher. Yeah, we got others are still behind, that's good. This is pretty mad. Good lord. Oh. There's people, always a good sign. Right, what we're going to do? Left, left residential street. This just takes, you just follow your nose down here and it takes you to the um, hotel. This is it. Do you want to go ahead? And I've just got the camera running, get you two. Can you go with John? Is that all right? Excellent. That was pretty epic. I have to say. Well, welcome to day two of this um, Africa Twin adventure across the Pyrenees. Um, great rise um, yesterday and today. But perfect weather again, and we're heading across to Tremp. Actually, I'll just show you on the map where we are. I'm going to just pop over here. <coughs> we last night found. Um, Rebes de Fraser, this little town here, and then we're going to follow this highlighted route. So we're going to go up the valley and then we're going to turn left up into the hills. And this is actually this one where we're going right along the top, so I'm really looking forward to make our way across, come down a, a red route, and then we're going to cross it to Tremp, famous by being by the lake. So, anyway, I had last time we did this tour, a lot of people. Um, said, how do we do the navigation out here? And there's this uh, company called Verbration, which is this French company, and they do these routes. And with those, you, you sign up, and then they send you a huge wad of uh, paper, A5 paper, and you're meant to stitch it all together, and it's got like tulip marks to where to go as you do the tracks. That's what we did last year. It, you need special equipment to do it, and it's pretty hard. So what we did this time, uh, I've got a Garmin uh, Montana 610, and we put all the waypoints into that, which we thought, oh, that's good, and we're going to follow those. And then it tells you, as soon as you try and set it all up, um, there's too many waypoints. Actually, I don't know if you can squeeze down there, Charlie. What do you think? This is, this is the Garmin here. Actually, if I take it out, let's hold on. So this is a Garmin like this. Uh, tells us where we are. I go out of here, and I go where to, and I go to routes. And that's today's routes. And there we all are, all those waypoints. So I should, in theory, just be able to press go. But no, only 50 waypoints can be used to follow the road. So that's no good. Um, so we didn't expect that. Right, let's put that back to map. We didn't expect that. So what we're having to do is choose a waypoint, say 30 kilometers away, drive to that one, and then put the next waypoint in. So that's how. Uh, we can get around, but uh, this is amazing where it will find 
because you can ask it to route across roads and include tracks, bridleways, etc. And Spain is pretty free where you can ride a motorbike on these tracks, these bridle paths. It's much better than France and significantly better than the UK. So that's why it's magic on these sort of venture bikes out in this area. Okay, the other thing I thought it might be worth discussing is the gear you wear. Uh, Last year we just overheated. We used uh, normal uh, motorcycle uh, jackets, etc., with the protection built in. This year I'm using uh, under protection, uh, just a zip Knox um, under vest that's got armoured here and on the shoulders, back, etc. And then you just wear this sort of top on uh, just to keep the dust out and things like that. It's ventilated. It's so much better out here in this sort of gear than a full regular motorcycle jacket. The other thing I learnt is if you have the knee protectors built into the trousers, they move about and they're not always in the right place. So this year we use strap-on knee protectors instead, always in the right place. And then it frees you to wear um, the, I've got this is Klim um, Dakar pants as well. The reason they are Dakar pants is when it gets warms up, you open a vent like that, and you have a vent in the trouser, that's great. When you're standing on the pegs, that's just lovely, just to suddenly have this sort of breeze going down and you're cooling down. Because it's, it's much more physical riding an, an adventure bike um, along the trails than just scooting along a motorway or something. So it's, you, you are more active and you sweat more and get hot. And that's why you also carry these um, rucksacks with um, water, um, you know, camel back in them. So you're used two litres of water a day out on the trails. I mean, it's, it's maximum temperature today, they're saying 24 or something. We saw 27 yesterday, so it's, it's proper warm when you're on the bikes. But a really tight little pack like that. I mean, we use the strap-on luggage like this. Don't, I've got panniers for this bike. I'd never dream of using them on a trail type ride. They're just too big, too bulky. And if the bike unfortunately does go, the transit is going past. Yeah, if you do put the panniers on, they're just so bulky and they're just not good news on a trail. And if you do drop the bike, they have a, a habit of squashing you as, as well, you know, as well as getting damaged. So stop luggage is the way to go when you're going off road. Finally, the helmet. I use this uh, Bell helmet. Um, I can alternate between goggles or use the full visor like that. And they have the peak. It's just, the peak's really useful when you're riding up in the mountains in the sun or whatever. You can just, you know, just like wearing a peak cap. It's, it's very good. Vented at the front, um, lightweight, works really well. I think that's the gear. My, my son prefers goggles, so he wears an open helmet with goggles. Uh, the bikes, we like to, if you can, put some bars on it like this, because what you don't want to do is the bike to go over on the side and smash the radiator. So these are really good. They're also good handles if you've got to pick the bike up or whatever if you have got to. You have to suspect at some point you, you might well drop the bike, but it's normally a very slow speed drop and uh, not a lot of damage hits them. Right, we need to go. Um, you'll join us later when we're up in the hills. Amazing bits of road again. Just waking up way to the first trial, trail rather. Nice way to start the morning. John's doing a bit of leading, which is which is good. The only trouble is you have to eat a bit of dust if you're in the back of the queue. It's just the sort of track I don't like on the road tyres really. I haven't got the bite in the gravel at the front. So I'm just doing my best to lean over the front and just dab the rear brake as well to bring it round. Yeah, I'll just catch Charlie up. Oh, he's doing a bit of motocrossing, are we? Oh, but I'll go at that. Yeah, and then the front goes as he hit the gravel. Hmm need knobblies. I'm just adjusting the back brake because it seems to have locked on which is not helpful. I'm not sure why. It's always good to have the mole grips out. And it's the left hand thread so I'll be going the wrong way. Dear. I'm very nervous about the sump on this. 
or the casings and just looking out for the big rocks anything loose that could flick up well, you've got to be a little bit more accurate with those sort of loose rocks the little bites you can sort of jinx uh, left or right very quickly but on the bigger bite you've just yeah you've got to do it a bit more purpose Going to a bit of a muddy trail at the moment. Where are we? Let's just see what this says. 5.7 kilometres. Wow. Got one bike behind. And two bikes behind. Good. Well, I'll press on then. This probably doesn't look steep from where you are. I'm for sure you it is. I can't get over how the DCT gearbox knows I want full engine braking so it's it's not thinking of changing out at first. Um, I'm on the back brakes so I don't you know even though I've got ABS I don't want to risk a front skid and down you go. Started out a little village you just no idea what was coming around the corner I just completely bottomed this out on a yump back there. It might just be the centre stand coming down actually. See now we're on mud. So odd. It's all fence, so I'm thinking oh there must be cattle around. Just continue. Yeah, it's up here. Yeah, it's up here, up here. Come on, come on, come on. You hit the beans. Look at that down there, I'm all through that valley. Just got to look out for the bigger stones. Wow, look at that. Whoa. Come on, front. Well, the DCT is getting in the muddle. Oh, dear me. What a complete pig of that. Look at this bloody scenery. We have a flat tyre. Well, we'll try the foam. Hopefully, we'll get away with that. You have to twist this or something. There it goes. Going in. Going in. Please work. Oh, that isn't going to be very good, is it? You think the tube's gone? I know the tube's gone on the, where the valve is. There's nothing happening. It's just spewing out the bottom, isn't it? It's not coming out the top. Well, I don't know how much to use. How much do I put in? Just keep it's filling. It's going, it. actually. Keep it is filling. going. Right, yeah. I'll fill in it. Yeah, just fill it. Yeah. We've got, I've got helmet and stuff on because you have to ride straight away to mend the, the puncture. But looking at this, it looks like the valve... There is, there is pressure in there. I don't think we're having a lot of luck with this puncher. I think I still have a flat tyre at the front. Oh, what a pain. Right, it's now a matter of changing the tube in the middle of nowhere. Well, that didn't work, the bit of foam, so now it's front wheel coming off. Fortunately, the Africa Twin, uh, the new one's got a centre stand, which is just what you want at moments like this. Uh, you're well away from RAC Rescue in these sort of surroundings. Yeah, you really hope, what we're going to do is put a, we've got an uh, inner tube, 21 um, inch tube for 21 inch uh, tyre, and then we've got little tiny pumps, and we'll blow it up and keep our fingers crossed. Handbook talks about taking the brake calipers off as well, which we're ignoring. We're doing male pattern blindness on that one. It doesn't come past the bloody calipers. It doesn't. No. Nope. You do have to take the calipers off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've had a proper wrestle 
trying to get this puncher repaired because um, we've got a 21 inch uh, tube on board so we took the tire off, got the inner tube out okay, um, put got the new inner tube, started laid out, all seemed a bit odd because it wasn't fitting quite right and then noticed that the tube had 19 inch written on it, not 21, even though it came out of a 21 inch box. Right old wrestle, trying to get the tube in there. It's just basically the wrong side inner tube for this tire, but it's the only one we've got. And uh, we're wrestling to get it in. Hopefully, uh, we're gonna manage it. So I mean, no, it's a truck. This is the first thing that's gone past us in an hour and a bit, but uh, there's not a lot of civilization in these parts, but we're just blowing it up. Hopefully we're gonna be out of jail. Okay, we're about to be abandoned. Um, we got about a, a kilometre on the mended tyre and um, had to yeah, take it, stop again, take the wheel off, and there it goes. I will... Yeah, I'm not going to see those guys again for two, three hours. Um, all because the wrong inner tube was put in a 21 inch box saying new inner tube. This sounds like motorbikes arriving, which would be really, really good. Yes. Well, there we go. Yeah. Fantastic. Right. It's game on. Let's get the spanners out. More beautiful rows. Making a bit of effort to make her up some of the time lost from the blessed tyre. What a pain that was. But uh, yeah, hoping for some more gravel tracks, but not complaining at a stretch of time like this. Wow, look at that. Listen to the clunks on that giant sump guard. Very glad it's there. Well, that's a long way down. <laughs> I reckon that's where we're going. Oh, I just love the way this bike. It's got this wide tank. Oh, what's Charlie doing? Hey? Oh, he wants a picture. Keep doing that on this trip. I think, whoa, I need a picture of that. No idea where it is. Oh, look at these rocks. Let's look forward. I hope they put a good inner tube in this front tyre. It's sort of weird this bike because you, your brain tells you this is a thousand cc sort of a big adventure bike, 240 kilos, and then you get it on a track like this, and it just feels like an oversized dirt bike. Um, Really easy to control, feels so utterly natural on the pegs. And you just yeah, squirt it along. And then, is it, hang on a minute, no, I'm on a 1000cc motorbike. It's odd, really, really impressive on the way it's sort of nimble and transforms from that squirting, scratching round the bends on the on tarmac, on great bits of tarmac. And then you get on a lane like this and you just rock along like a just the same as the, we were on the set of KTM 450s. And having done it on both bikes, I know which one I'd choose uh, if we came back again, and that's one of these. Because it makes the road section so much more fun. This is very controllable, and sort of more fun, because you, you just have to concentrate a bit more because you know you're on a bigger bike, but whoa, just handles it. Wow, where are we going now? End of the world stuff. Oh, look at the sat nav, I suppose. Yeah, 600 metres or somewhere. Look at those cliffs. Ha. 
we're staying tonight somewhere down there Great trail to do end of day. Whoa. Didn't see that yump coming. Oh, yeah, this is the danger. Suddenly there's a red soil, red tinge to the track. Oh, I think we're fairly close to civilization now. Yeah, there's a bleep. Whoa, look at that. Tarmac. Fantastic. Left on unclassified road. Well, there we go. That was a great track great one to finish the day right hotel time one thing I wasn't sure about when this Africa twin arrived the, the, the new one was it had this DCT gearbox and being a bit of an old fart I always think oh manual that'd be all right but this DCT what it introduces is you can just forget about gear changes and it's something it's a bit like a heated screen or something it's a, it's an extra you didn't realize uh, you needed until you've tried it and Whoever did the mapping of this gearbox needs a gold star because on road you just squirt, you've got these, you know, sport, three versions of sport. In normal drive it is a bit of a commuter bike, a sort of scooter-esque sort of feel and just gets around. But then you've got three other modes and also manual on top. And I found first or second mode sport was ideal. It just did a gear change when I wouldn't I would have done a gear change myself. Um, so it just gets rid of that need. And then off-road. On the positive side, it gets rid of a, a gear lever and a clutch uh, to snap off if you have a bit of a knock, so that's a good thing. And it, it sort of gets on with it, you've, but you've got the manual override. The, the two areas I found it slightly wanting was on those super uh, sharp uphill hairpins. It would just hesitate between um, being second as you approach, and I wanted to go around in second, but then it would change to first just as I was at the apex. That's, that's my, it's pilot error really, because all I've got to do is flick the handle and put it in first before we go round and just zip round and it's off again. So I found that. And the other thing it does is if you're going downhill, it doesn't always give the full engine brake in. There's, you need more revs on. If you're going slower, it seems to disengage. And I was using the rear brake more than I expected and using the rear brake uh, in place of engine braking. So you can get around it, it, you have to learn it, but the positives, it's so easy to make the bike, so easy to live with, I would actually go for it over a manual. So overall then with the uh, DCT gearbox, has the bikes equipped, 12 grand, I really like this bike. Um, I, would, I would recommend it as a, a sort of do everything. What Honda have done so well, this bike feels fully sorted out of the box. Everything about it, the driving position, the riding position, just feels right uh, it's it's hats off on that front the engine is grunt enough the engine has a nice character the exhaust knows you can tell why these bikes are popular and it can do the rough stuff as long as you're confident and you've had a little bit of off-road experience you can take this bike places you just wouldn't imagine so i've really liked it but it's also proven how good the older africa twin is um, that was right at, straight out of the box as well no wonder it was so popular yes it's a bit wanting on brakes in today's sort of on road performance and that sort of thing but it could hack it out out you know on the rough stuff and super reliable and looks the part as well so i've enjoyed both of them really so there you go that's that's this uh, tour over i hope you've enjoyed coming along for the ride the puncher was a bit of a bore uh, but if you have enjoyed keep watching keep subscribing on twitter and instagram as well more videos coming along very soon Thank you.